What's up my common comrades, today we're diving back into the Suicide Squad title with a breakdown of issue 7 and 8 of the series. Yes, the series is about 8 issues ahead of this, but it's been a great series and issues 7 and 8 are a great jumping on point for any of you who haven't been reading. Then we'll be bringing everything current in our next episode of the series. You can check out our episodes on the first 6 issues right here, but now let's get into it and see why Peacemaker is fighting Swamp Thing. The page of issue 7 serves as a recap of what the Suicide Squad is and what Amanda Waller has been up to since the beginning of the series. Essentially, Amanda Waller is recruiting villains from all over the multiverse with the help of Bloodsport to help her create her own Justice League. And once assembled, she's going to take over another Earth and make it one big happy place, as the narrator says. Narration then says, but not everything is going according to her vision board. She's been messing with everyone's mind with a mixed bag of nuts results. Like this baked potato, Waller made him believe he was Superboy, but he's actually a Xerox from the 90s called Match. So in order to put things back on track, Waller has brought in the big guns, or rather gun, or rather me, Ambush Bug. As we realize, he's the one narrating the issue. We then get a splash page of him saying how powerful he is as we see Superman, Batman, Aquaman, and Green Lantern versions of himself. If you guys don't know, Ambush Bug is a teleporter who is very similar to Deadpool in the sense that he breaks the fourth wall, and even his sense of humor. Anyway, as Ambush Bug continues to narrate, we see him narrating on an island where he's stuck with the rest of the Suicide Squad, aka Bloodsport, Black Siren, Nocturna, and Calibra, as he's playing with action figures of them. Ambush Bug then says, you guys have really never heard of me. I'm the greatest criminal mind in the history of crime and minds. Bloodsport says, we get it. You're a bug. Now tell us what you're doing here. He replies, boosting sales. Oh, and I'm your squad's new teleporter. Calibra tells him, we have a machine that teleports us now, bug. And please, you're a criminal. Seriously? What are you in for? He replies, war crimes. Kidding. I'm a con man. I'm a retcon man. Anyway, if you guys aren't familiar with him, he was the news reporter for the New 52 post-issue news report called Channel 52. Bug then says, spoiler alert, we're going to hell in this issue. Further spoiler alert, it really doesn't go well for like any of us. Bloodsport then asks, how do you know where we've been, where we're going? He replies, what? Don't you guys get it? None of this is real. You're all in a comic book. Which is hilarious, but Bloodsport then walks away saying, okay, I'm done listening to Looney Tunes. But Nocturna says, wait, the bug might be crazy, but he's right. None of this is real. Bloodsport then turns around saying, oh really Nocturna? Then where are we? The next page reveals they're actually at the Suicide Squad Black Sight prison, where Waller has them in some sort of sleep cryo chamber tubes. Waller asks, what just happened? and her doctor replies, I believe they all just figured out they're all in a simulation. Waller says, let me guess, the bug told them. The doctor tells her, still not sure about adding him to the team, but Waller says we need someone who can teleport for their next mission. And our transport system can get them inside, but won't work once they're beyond the veil. The doctor then says, still not over the fact that hell is real and we're sending them there. Waller then asks, how are our patients? The doctor says, one is still recovering from multiversal travel and the other is still traumatized by the truth. As we see Superboy, or rather Match, as he's been revealed to truly be, sitting alone upset. If you guys weren't aware, Match is a 90s character who was a clone of Superboy. Anyway, once Waller walks in, he asks, What did you do to me, Waller? She replies, We gave you a modified version of your cocktail so that you could talk normally. He then breaks the table saying, You made me believe I was Superboy. You messed with my mind. At which point, she electrocutes him via a chip in his neck while saying, I gave you the opportunity you always wanted. You were never meant to be Superboy. You were meant to be so much more. Don't you understand by now, Match? You are nobody. We then see the suitcase she brought in open up on the floor with the Superman costume inside of it. Waller then goes to check on Talon, who we know isn't actually crazy, and can fully speak, but he's playing possum with her. She tells him, I know you're faking, but I'm still gonna let you sit out on this mission. In the meantime, the therapist will be guiding your care. Unfortunately for you, they're much harsher than me, as we see them get scalpels and syringes out. We are then taken to Peacemaker, who Waller sent on a separate mission to find and bring in Swamp Thing. Peacemaker then talks to Waller over the comm saying, I know that all these machines are designed for heavy casualties, but it almost seems like you're determined to make sure I don't make it back alive this time. She then tells him, you asked me to make you believe in what the squad is doing. Well, this is me doing exactly that. Swamp Thing can communicate with every every green inch of the earth. Imagine the surveillance possibilities an asset like that would have to the squad, Peacemaker. She then says, bring me the Swamp Thing, and if you still don't believe, then I will set you free by detonating the bomb in your head, while she hangs up on him. Her agent Parker then asks, if you really believe Peacemaker helped Rick Flag escape Belle Reeve, why not just send him to a therapist? She replies, Peacemaker is many things, but chief among them is he's able to shut down every part of his mind except for his mission. That's what makes him a valuable asset. I need him to believe in the squad again. Once he does, he'll give up Flag. Parker asks, and if he doesn't, she just says, boom. So if you weren't aware, one of the reasons Waller sent Peacemaker on this mission is because she thinks he helped Rick Flag escape 
so this is her way of getting back at him, slash hopefully getting him to admit it. Elsewhere, we see the rest of the Suicide Squad, who is still in the simulation, is being attacked by demons. They find out this is a simulation to see if they're ready to fight the real demons in hell. And after they destroy the simulated demons, Nocturna finds out she's also not the real Nocturna, but rather an alternate version from a different reality that Bloodsport found and brought to Waller, and since then has had her memories tampered with. Superboy, who is not really Superboy, but rather Match, can relate to this and says, I know what you're feeling, Nocturna, and I'm sorry, but I can assure you, Waller can mess with our heads, but she can't change who we are, what we really are. Nocturna just says, I'm going to kill her. But Waller comes in in a hologram saying, let me tell you all what you're going to do. You're going to do exactly as you're told. Nocturna says, you're a monster. Waller replies, monster, please, I saved you. You are nothing on your earth. All of you are nothing, but now you're going to help save the world. Bloodsport asks, which one? She says, the only one that matters. Now your training is done. You easily handled what you'll soon be up against. So it's time you all depart for your mission. And I'm afraid Ambush Bug was right. You're all going straight to hell. And now before you ask, you won't have to die to get there. You'll be teleported. Your target is the Rock of Eternity. Get the job done or you'll be staying in hell permanently. They're all teleported to hell where they're immediately attacked by all sorts of demons. With Ambush Bug saying, you may want to make some tweaks to your simulation doohickey. Not sure it's up to scale, as the demons are way bigger and a lot more intense than in the simulations. Long story short, as the Suicide Squad is going up against all these demons, they're eventually greeted by Mind Warp and his Hell Squad, saying, tell Amanda Waller, the Hell Squad is coming for her. With Ambush Bug cosplaying as Harley Quinn saying, man, I'm totally firing my agent for booking me this gig. Next month, hell's to pay. The next issue picks up with Ambush Bug recapping Peacemaker's mission to get Swamp Thing. The captions say, Peacemaker, star of the silver screen and soon to be streaming on a smartphone on your earth, while Amanda Waller shipped off Toilet Head to the middle of nowhere to fetch an all new super sexy Swamp Thing. The plan was to use a bio agent to cut off Swampy from the green, and by green, I mean the earth. Not dollar dollar bills, y'all. As you can see, like all the Suicide Squad plans, it went super well, with absolutely no problems. Nobody died. Why did Waller send an important piece of IP on a deadly mission? Well, the backstory on this backstory is that Waller thinks Peacemaker let her nemesis rig flag out of Bell Reef, which happened back in issue four. You see, Peacemaker starting to doubt his commitment to the Suicide Squad. As we see Peacemaker attack Swamp Thing, with Swamp Thing asking, why? Peacemaker replies, I'm not sure I even know anymore. All I know is you have power, the kind they all want. And until they have it, there will be no peace. And I make the peace, as the two start fighting. But come on, did Peacemaker really think he's a match for Swamp Thing, one of the most powerful beings in all of the DC Universe? The point is Swamp Thing grabs Peacemaker with his vine, saying, wait, as he proceeds to remove the bomb from Peacemaker's head. Swamp Thing then says, it is what they use to control you, isn't it? I have taken the power from them. Peacemaker says, Waller can't see me anymore? Swamp Thing tells him, my vines will mimic the electrical impulses of a brainstem. It shows them what they expect to see. You truly want to make peace? This is your opportunity. Walk away. With Peacemaker stunned, relieved, and shocked all at the same time. We are then taken to an offshore site where Ambush Bug tells us that Waller is now on the run from the US government instead of working for them. He continues to say Waller dug out Match from the remainder bin and Match is a bizarro clone of Superboy. And then Waller made Match believe he was actually Superboy. But then the real Superboy showed up and like told on her to like everyone. Anyway, we see Waller hiding in her top secret base in the middle of nowhere, where she tells her people, get me eyes on Peacemaker and Swamp Thing now. Tell me you've got some good news for me, Dr. Rodriguez. At this point, she basically tells her, less good, more confusing. Ambush Bug then explains to us in caption saying, so Talon has been playing possum. If playing possum means playing crazy instead of playing dead. Just between us, he's actually been a spy this whole time for Waller's old friend slash current rival, Colonel Rick Flagg. Dr. Rodriguez then tells Waller after all the tests she took, yes, Talon is crazy. Waller says, okay, he's crazy. Fine, get him ready. After what he's been through with the therapist, sending him to hell will feel like a vacation. But when Waller leaves, Dr. Rodriguez says privately, don't worry, Talon. Waller can't hear us now. You can cut the crap. You're crazy, but you're not this kind of crazy. I know you're faking. And once more, I know you're communicating with someone from the outside world. I don't care who it is either. If they want Waller taken out, then I want to help. Talon then opens his eyes, shocked, as we get this second plot twist. Then back in hell, we see the Suicide Squad fighting the Hell Squad and demons with some pretty epic fight sequences. But while they're all fighting, Ambush Bug says, see you kids in the next issue, as he teleports to the temple that the Rock of Eternity is in. He then gets in on the radio and says, Waller, I'm in, but I think the box you sent for the rock may be a little completely too small. She tells him, I didn't send you in there to steal the rock of eternity, Bug. Now listen closely. At this point, Dr. Rodriguez and Waller transport talent to hell to help out the Suicide Squad, as well as Major Force, which is a deep pull. I don't remember the last time I saw Major Force appear in a comic book, let alone know that he's now part of the Suicide Squad. For those of you who don't know, Major Force is a dark reflection and wannabe replacement of Captain Adam. His real name is Clifford Zmeck, and he's a villain of Captain Adam and the Green Lanterns. The reason I always remembered him is because he popped up in the Superman Batman Public Enemies animated movie. Anyway, once Major Force and Talon show up, they start wrecking shop in Hell. But unfortunately, Calibra is killed by a member of Hell Squad, with Talon being pretty upset about this as the two have developed a pretty good bond over the last several issues. After this, Major Force, being the incredibly powerful villain that he is, kills Mind Warp and everyone else attacking them in Hell. He also brings Calibra back to life saying, mission accomplished. Back at Waller's headquarters, we
we see Dr. Rodriguez hold up a cube saying, not bad for a guy named Ambush Bug. How did you find him again? She says he showed up knocking on Belle Reeve, said he was there to audition for a movie, which is clearly the Suicide Squad movie. Dr. Rodriguez then says, not sure he's got acting chops, but he did secure us a sample of the metaphysical shield that protects the Rock of Eternity. It will take me and my team a few days, but we will be able to use it to protect Earth 3 from interdimensional invasion. Can't get in from below, now we just need to protect Earth 3 from above. Waller says, our next mission will take care of that, revealing to us that the reason Waller sent them in was to get the metaphysical shield that protects the Rock of Eternity so that she could use it and modify it somehow to protect Earth 3. But she still needs one more piece, which is why they're going on another mission. After this, we see a shot of Calibra confused about what she's doing and where she is. But Waller says, don't worry, you're alive again. And also, you no longer have a bomb in your head, but even death can't get you out of the Suicide Squad now, as she clearly has some sort of new mission for her as we see bodies on tables all around them. We then get a page of Peacemaker saying, I know you could still hear me, Waller. Somehow, go ahead, do your worst. I don't even know who the hell I am anymore. As he stares at his reflection in his helmet. But then a voice says, been blocking Waller's comms for almost a day now. She can't hear or see anything. And let me tell you exactly who you are, Peacemaker. You're a member of the Suicide Squad. And when Peacemaker turns around, he sees it's Rick Flag talking to him with Mirror Master, Cheetah, and a Parademon. And with that, issue eight comes to an end. Like I keep saying, guys, the Suicide Squad title is just a ton of fun, and I'm really digging what they're doing with Peacemaker. Up until recently, when we were introduced to John Cena's live action version of Peacemaker on the big screen, the character wasn't really used much in comics by DC. As a result, he didn't have that much of a history, especially in modern comic book continuity. So I love how they're finally fleshing him out in more modern comics. But as always, we want to know what you guys think of this Suicide Squad title. Let us know down in the comments. And just like that, that brings today's episode of Variant to a close. But if you enjoyed today's video, check out this one right here. And if you like all of our videos, like, subscribe, comment. It helps us out. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.